The Celtics are in deep improv. They got to come up with an offense that doesn't have a point guard. I'm Kevin Dupont for Globe 10.0. Here with Chad Finn and Chad, how do you make it work without a point guard? Well, I think they put a lot of the burden on uh, uh, the old reliable Paul Pierce there. He's not quite the uh, offensive uh, force night to night that he was for so long uh, since he first got here in 98. But he uh, So he brings it up and distributes. He does. Yeah, okay. the offense will run through him. You, you, they're fortunate that they have depth at guard. They have uh, Jason Terry's been yep. lousy, but he's an established guy. Courtney Lee, Barbosa on the end of the bench will step in. But none of those guys are a true point guard, so uh, the burden, most of the burden of this is going to fall on 34. Well, Doc's been talking about this, that they, they, they've been operating this way to a degree, and that when Rondo came out, these two guys, you know, two of those three guards you mentioned would come in and, and you know, as we say, improvise. Yeah. Over the long term, do you think they can keep it patched together? With, uh, with Pierce, with these guys? I, I think they probably go along at the pace they're going along at all season here. Where they're around a 500 team, they probably end up with that 8 seed. But uh, uh, the thing you lose with Rondo, not only is his command of the offense, but he's just a fun guy to watch. Good night, bad night. Yeah. Uh, he's about their most electric player they've had since Bird was here, especially on the good nights, obviously. That's going to be missed. But their efficiency of their offense hasn't been great as it is, so they'll probably be right around where they were there. Well, you've, you've opened up the Pandora's box here. If, if they're going to plug along like they were plugging along, then why do you keep Rondo? Why do you keep Rondo? I know, I know he's a great player, yeah. I, but, but if, you, if you're just going to be 500 with him and you're going to be 500 without him, then why not move him and get and be better than 500? Well, first of all, because he's the best thing you have, and uh, he's also probably argu arguably the best contract in basketball. Five years, 55 million. I think he's in year two or three of it. But you have him locked up at a great rate for a couple of seasons. You can find pieces to fit around him. You still have Garnett for two more years beyond this one. Um, they're, they're, That's looking they're, tough. That's yeah, looking like a tough contract to, right now. Yeah, they're going to be in the middle there a little bit for a while. But uh, I, I, don't, I don't think you trade your best asset unless you get uh, much better value. Okay, well right now the point is they don't have a point guard and for two or three months they got to find the exclamation mark for this team.